It's Saturday, the 3rd of February, 2024, and I'm on board the 1058 train to Leeds. Statesman Rail's Settle and Carlisle Circular Tour is running from Stoke-on-Trent via Derby, Chesterfield and Leeds to Appleby. It will return via Carlisle using the London Road curve to access the West Coast Main Line to Carnforth, where it will reverse and use the Little North Western via Bentham and Giggleswick to reach Settle Junction. I filmed at London Road recently, so have opted for a change of location today and hope to film the arrival at Appleby from the air. A word of warning. The wind is very strong at Carlisle. It may not be possible to fly the drone. Let's hope and wait and see. At Petrol Bridge Junction, we separate from the Tyne Valley Line to Newcastle and make our way towards the Eden Valley and the spectacular Settlement Carlisle. Four miles out, we speed through the old Cumwinton Station, closed in 1956. Low house signal box and level crossing. Usually a reliable reporting point for those seeking train running information online. Then we cross Drybeck Viaduct. More impressive from the ground than from the train. Preserved Armourthwaite signal box, maintained by a dedicated group of volunteers. At Low Barren Wood, we plunge into a tunnel, the first of 14 between Armourthwaite and Settle. And it soon becomes apparent that the train is slowing down. Recent storms and floods have left the track bed somewhat less stable than it should ideally be. A 20 miles per hour restriction applies for the next three miles. Lazenby and Kirk Oswald. Little Salkeld station closed in the 1970s and is now in use as a private residence.
Welcome aboard this Northern Service 2. Please. The next station stop is Appleby. Colgate Tunnel is soon followed by Colgate Signal Box, another reliable reporting point, and its level crossing. The station here closed in 1970. Soon we pass the British Gypsum Works at Kirby Thor, a source of freight traffic for the line. Long Martin Station, another 1970 closure. The extent of the railway buildings shows just how important the railway was in these rural areas before the motor car became universal. And so to my destination of Appleby. The train has almost two hours ahead of it to reach Leeds, and first it must reach the highest point of any mainline railway in England, and some of the most stunning railway scenery. And now I'm greeted by a local enthusiast with the news that the northbound service train and the special are delayed at Gargrave following a fatality on the track. It sounds as though we may be in for a long wait. This strange little setup was sitting in the centre road at Carlisle as my train awaited its path. It passed through Appleby, en route to Doncaster, some 13 minutes behind the Leeds train. There's a gap of almost an hour before the next train, the delayed leads to Carlisle, and it's none too warm out on the platform, so I retire into the waiting room for some warmth and a read. Despite our earlier concerns, this train is only half an hour behind schedule, so hopefully the special will not be too long in arriving. 
I've already put the drone in the air, and at low levels, near the ground, it was being blown about alarmingly. But I'll risk it and see what we can get. Appleby is a small town with practically no public transport other than the railway. The present station on the old Midland Railway was opened in 1876. It was named Appleby West, as an older station, Appleby East, existed on the Eden Valley Railway's route from Penrith to Kirby Stephen, with ongoing connections to the northeast of England. That line closed to passengers between 1962 and 1963. The tracks going off to the right of the signal box provided a link between the two lines. The stopover at Appleby was inevitably very brief, but it at least gave the passengers a chance to stretch their legs. Two ladies with whom I chatted had enjoyed the journey enormously and were quite unaware of the reason for their delay earlier in the trip.
As the circular sets off on its circuitous return journey, the station master crosses the footbridge to supervise the arrival and departure of a lead service. Earlier in the day, there was some doubt as to whether my 1515 return train to Carlisle would actually run. But thankfully it did, and ran on time, making the tight connection to a Dumfries train and getting me home in daylight. Just. Thanks for watching, and here's to the next time.